Tarragona with Alshandra. Alshandra, I know, and then your full name, Ashis. Ashis Rosa. Ashis Rosa. Teros Blas, which is my married name, but I don't use. Okay, it so it can name. get complicated if we want. It's very long. We usually have very long names. So in Portugal, you got two family names. Usually. And you use the last one, normally. Both. You use both. Because in this case, Teros Blas is a combined name. Okay, but you are doctor. Asis Rosa. Asis Rosa. Yes. Okay. Good. Now in Spain we do it, usually do it the other way. The other way around, is it? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, Alexandra, what do you do? So I'm assistant professor of the Department of English uh, at the Faculty of Letters, uh, University of Lisbon. Mm -hmm. I have been teaching there since 1990. Mm -hmm. And I also belong to the University of Lisbon Center for English Studies, Ulysses. Mm -hmm where I lead a research group on reception and translation studies since 2007. Okay, so you're doing translation studies within an English department and within a research group in English studies? Doing translation studies within an English research group, mm -hmm. teaching English linguistics, okay. discourse analysis, pragmatics, and uh, also training translators for the past years because I have okay. been asked to teach um, audiovisual translation, technical translation, okay. discourse analysis applied to uh, translation. So, so you're training professional translators? Or you're, yes, yeah? both okay. at undergraduate and graduate level. Okay, so it's quite a big project in translation studies without a department of translation studies. Yes. Is that a problem? or? Is that okay? Uh, I think we were very lucky to have the uh, Ulysses because we were very welcome there as a group. Uh, there are 17 researchers doing translation studies there now. And uh, we, the group started in 2007 and I have been leading that group since 2007. Um, these will be my last mm -hmm. two years uh, as uh, head of that group. And uh, we were really lucky to be able to work on translation studies in that framework because we did not have uh, translation studies at our uh, faculty at the University of Lisbon. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be offering a PhD for the first time next year. PhD in translation, translation studies. studies. So training researchers okay. in translation studies, not training translators. Um, this is all relatively new then. In yes, uh, yeah. relatively new. I was the first PhD in translation studies in the University of Lisbon, mm -hmm. and then there, it was it was not no longer possible to um, do a PhD in that discipline. And now we are starting uh, with yeah. uh, a one year uh, program with classes, seminars, and then uh, supervision. Okay, I remember in the nineteen nineties we did a survey. And in Portugal, the translators were being trained in, in institutes, business college institutes, or something like that, not the university system at all. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, I, I always thought I would be a translator. Uh, mm -hmm. And I did my first degree in uh, modern languages and literatures, English and German. And I started uh, translating as soon as I finished my first degree. Uh, okay, so when was that? In your early was, 20s, you're translating? Is yes. That, yes, okay. And, uh, but there was no uh, first degree in translation mm -hmm. at that time uh, in a university setting. So mm -hmm. uh, I did the modern languages. Yeah. Uh, but you, you were a professional translator then? Were you living off that or were you teaching as well? I was, I was starting, but I finished my first degree in 89. Yeah. And I started teaching uh, the next year. Okay. Because so you never, there was a job open, opening, I applied. You never and really I was escaped. Selected. From, yes, did, I did that for what? Um, six months? Okay. As a technical translator okay. with insurance, legal right, translation, good. and also for a magazine. I translated for yeah. a magazine for several years. Um, so then when you were teaching, you were translating as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
How about now? Do you still translate? Or? Yes, now and then because I miss it. I like it a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I do a lot of revision because I'm asked to do that, especially not so much to translate yeah. but to revise. So you're revising other people's translations. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I like it a lot. And uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, a friend of mine just uh, wanted to know who could do a, a translation for him. And I said, I'll do it mm -hmm. because I miss it. Yeah. To be okay. honest. Yeah. 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 I hadn't done one in a long time because I stopped translating when I had to do research for the PhD. Okay, was I that couldn't... sort of mutually exclusive? I didn't manage to, to get the time to do Okay, both, so it's a question of time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that. We have lots of teachers, um, university teachers in Spain, who teach and translate because they have to. Mm -hmm. Is, what's the situation in Portugal? Is it? It's Similar helpful to, that, to have something on the side because yeah. the crisis is hitting us very hard. Yeah, so the salary yes. problem. Yes, yeah. it's going down all the yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's nice to have something on the side. I mm. financed my research with translation, most of it. Your own translations? My own translations, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, most of my trips abroad to look for bibliography mm -hmm. were financed by translation, okay. okay. self-funded. Uh, I got uh, scholarships as well uh, by the University of Lisbon Center for English Studies, by the uh, by foundations, uh, but most of it was self-funded okay. through translation. Good. You're talking about an inter-university uh, PhD. Doc, PhD. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Well, we started. I started working on that very intensely after 2010, uh, contacting possible partners, uh, and uh, in the end, we put together a program. We applied for different sorts of formats, uh, uniting three research centers: the University of Lisbon Center for English Studies. Um, the Center for Communication and Culture uh, in the Catholic University of uh, Portugal, uh, uh, where there is a research group headed by or led by uh, Teresa Suruya. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also contacted CEPTAP, Center for Translation and Anglo uh, uh, Portuguese Studies, uh, uniting the Universidade Nova and Universidade do Porto. Um, to cooperate with us, to make the most of the resources, human resources we have. So that's research three and centers? That, three research centers. In, in Lisbon India, and... Uh, in Lisbon and Porto. And, Porto. and, Porto. Yes. Yeah. and then, uh, it, it, in, in the end, we could not uh, submit an application uh, sponsored or uh, led by a research center. So we had to change that uh, format into three universities cooperating. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, we got together. It will be coordinated by Professor Teresa Sruya mm -hmm. and with the uh, collaboration of the Catholic University of Portugal and uh, Universidade Nova, Lisboa, Good. as well. Okay. And I'm very happy to see it. Was it hard to, to convince traditional modern language people that, that we need a PhD program in translation studies? Was that a struggle or was it easy? It was difficult to uh, to put the message across that uh, preparing or training translators is different from training researchers. Yeah. And everybody always goes, what's translation study? So you do translation. And we go, no, we do research on translation, on the historical role of translation for a culture, uh, on intercultural communication, on networks. Uh, and uh, people still don't know very well what translation studies is. Yeah. In that regard, at the University of Lisbon Center for English Studies, we have uh, launched a series of monthly talks on translation studies to disseminate what mm -hmm. translation studies is and bring to, to the faculty uh, national and international experts for an informal talk uh, on their uh, favorite topics. Okay. Um, we also invite translators to talk about their work. Uh, we have had 
uh, topics which are usually not dealt with during the curriculum, like religious texts. Mm -hmm. We had a specialist on Bible translation. We had Rabbi Rosenfeld talk about uh, the Torah and how they deal with translation, how usually mm -hmm. it, they're not very interested in translation. Um, and uh, we had technical translation, or the visual translation, literary translation, lots of different topics. What mm -hmm. is translation? So that helped you do the politics? I think it was important to uh, disseminate the idea of what translation yeah. studies is and okay. what it can cover and the interdisciplinary nature of the whole endeavor. Um, I think it was helpful because mm. every month we have somebody else talking about mm. a topic, a different one. So what kind of translation studies or research do you need in Portugal? Is there anything specific that's specific to the Portuguese situation? Or do you see yourself as part of a European or international discipline? Both. I yeah. think there's something that is transversal to uh, uh, European endeavors, for mm -hmm. instance. But there's something very specific about Portugal. Uh, in, For instance, we have a joint research project called Intercultural Literature, a Critical Bibliography, and we have been mapping literary translation uh, published in volume in Portugal since the 1930s. Mm -hmm. We have moved as far as the 1974 Portuguese Carnation okay. Revolution. Yeah. We have, by the end of this year, we'll probably have over 20,000 uh, records online. Okay. It's a free online database. Mm -hmm. And we have tried to uh, classify those volumes in terms of the most relevant information for translation studies researchers. Do you be looking for people to research, do research on that kind of database? It's so. out there. Yeah. So okay. for everyone to profit, yeah. uh, if they're interested in doing research on translation, literary translation in Portugal. Mm. So this mapping, I think, was really relevant to get us started. Uh, to build on previous work which was published in volume on literary translation in Portugal. Then I think uh, at the University of Lisbon Center we also do research on academic and technical texts. Um, so technical translation, process studies, um, and uh, we also have a group of people doing research on audiovisual translation. So we have those three main mm -hmm. yeah. areas, literary, audiovisual, and technical translation. Um, it's descriptive translation okay. studies that we do there, okay. very much. Okay. Yeah. Portugal is still a country that translates a lot. Yes. And uh, audiovisual you've got on television, films are subtitled. Yes. So yes. do you think... Is it a special part of Portuguese culture, more so perhaps than in Spain, where we are now? What is a special part? The, the relation with translation. I, mean, I just know that Portuguese have really good foreign languages, for example. Yes, it has been studied by Conceição uh, Bravo in yeah. Algarve. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very important for us to have subtitles. I think yeah. we, we well, really, have the, the number of translated books is very high. It is. Last European time I checked, 38% yeah. of what is published in Portugal is translated. And that includes uh, a, a high percentage of school books. If we took yeah. that away from the, the counts, yeah. uh, the percentage of translation would be even higher. Okay. So it's a lot. We're a very open culture. And the yeah. way we translate is also relevant. Not only the quantity, mm -hmm. but what we tend to do in terms of translation, which is very much uh, oriented towards the source cultures and the uh, difference uh, to the Portuguese. We are interested in finding out what happens out there. It has been a, okay. a cultural mark for Portuguese in intercultural relations all the time, I think. Okay. Thank you very much, Alexandra. You're most welcome.